We finally started receiving and testing the new 2021 TV models, and among those were the QN85A and the QN90A from Samsung's Neo QLED lineup. If you're looking to get the most out of your TV, but might feel intimidated by the in-depth picture settings of your new QN85A or QN90A, then have no fear. Today, we'll be focusing on the picture settings for both these models, as they share the same interface and the same Tizen operating system. We'll explain the different features found deeper in the TV's menu and ultimately help you narrow down the settings for your ideal viewing and gaming experience. It's your TV, so feel free to tweak things to your own liking. We're simply here to give you our suggestions based on our findings by using specialized equipment and intensive testing. All right, let's help you guys become masters at customizing your TV. Hi, I'm Adam, a tester here at Ratings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for the latest videos and check out our website for the full review and more. We'll start this segment off by checking out the Q90A's interface. What we have here is a Tizen-based operating system. Samsung has improved the responsiveness and the overall feel of their smart TV features over the 2020 models, as you can see here. It's pretty snappy. The settings and options haven't changed much from last year's models though. We can see some of the more rudimentary picture settings over in this menu. The TV does a good job at explaining what each selection does. Our focus though will be on the picture settings found a bit deeper in the menu icon. Let's look at some of the main features the TV offers. You can use the home button on the remote to bring up the menu bar. First thing you want to do is link your account to your TV if you wish to use any paid apps. You can then visit the App Store, and there you'll be able to download things like Netflix, YouTube, Prime Video, and others. Usually, these streaming services are pre-installed, but you can check the App Store if they require any updates, along with other apps you've downloaded. Once you've downloaded your apps, you'll see them pop up on the tray here. This TV also has a streaming feature where you can wirelessly connect a device like your cell phone and beam content to your TV. You'll find that feature right over here. Unfortunately, you'll notice that Samsung continues to push ads here, and there's no way to remove them from the TV's interface. There are a few ways around this for the more tech savvy. You can use custom router firmware or third-party DNS blockers to remove the ads. If you're interested, check out this article right here. These TVs also support voice controls. You can simply click the mic button found on the remote and say something like, open YouTube. This is useful to select apps you have downloaded from the App Store or to even search within the app instead of having to rely on the on-screen keyboard. Now that we know how to navigate our TV, let's become masters at customizing our picture settings. If you're interested in getting the best settings for movies, you'll find it actually pretty simple. To start, you should disable all the eco mode settings if you're looking to get the most accurate image possible. The reason why we don't want to have this feature active is because it will automatically start changing the brightness based on the image and content being watched. This can become distracting and sometimes even completely remove details from the image. For SDR content, we found that movie mode is the most accurate picture mode out of the box and allows for the most customization. If the TV defaults your content to filmmaker mode, we suggest leaving it like that if you want an accurate image and don't mind the lack of customization. If you find it too limiting, you can return to the movie mode and follow the rest of our settings. So the purpose of filmmaker mode is that the content you're watching will be automatically optimized and adjusted to match the filmmaker's intent. Let us know below in the comments how you find this feature if you're on a Samsung product that can support it. In the expert settings, this is where you'll be able to modify the contrast, backlight, and color settings. We find that the color tone Warm 2 is the most accurate color temperature based on our calibration tests, but if you don't like warmer tones, you can always switch to cool. We base our calibration on color temperature of 6500 Kelvin, which is what most movies and content are mastered in. But go ahead and feel free to try different things. We also recommend you leave the contrast to 45, sharpness at 0 for no added sharpness, color to its default 25, and tint to 0. These settings are intended to be as close as possible to the original signal and mastering. We set the gamma to 2.2 as this was also closest to our calibration target. If you want to learn more about these settings, you can check our color accuracy article right here. The QN85A and QN90A have a local dimming feature which allows the screen to dim or brighten different backlight zones on the screen. There is no way to turn it off completely unless you go into the service menu, which can seem intimidating for some people. By setting the local dimming to high, this will result in the brightest image and most aggressive local dimming. 
That said, the aggressive local dimming can crush out some details in bright or dark scenes, so setting it to standard can help show a bit more detail. There's also the contrast enhancer feature that can help to brighten parts of the screen if you feel it's too dim. Unfortunately, this may also darken the darker spots in the scene, so it really depends on the content you're watching as to whether you want it on or not. If you're a fan of smoother motion in your video, you can enable a feature called motion interpolation. You can find these settings in the picture clarity tab outside of game mode. Turning the option to custom will enable interpolation and you can adjust the judder reduction until you find a setting you like. Some people find our recommended settings to be a bit dull, but if you're not interested in the most accurate picture, you can really make the image pop by setting the color temperature to cool. Putting the color setting up, increasing the contrast and making sure you have the backlight maxed out. Play around with these settings as much as you want. And don't worry about making mistakes. You can always just go to the main menu here and reset the input settings to default and try again. One thing we did notice with the QN85A is that on our checkerboard picture test, it seems like all the local dimming zones were on, making for a grayish tone to the black squares. During other content, however, the panel seemed to be working as it should. While we were discussing the QN85A, we also noticed during our testing that Samsung is using an ADS panel instead of what we expected to be a VA panel. This explains why the blacks aren't quite as dark on the ADS panel. On the upside, this does help with the viewing angles, giving a slight edge to the QN85A over the QN90A. ADS panels are very similar to IPS ones, with the main difference being that in ADS panels, they use a longitudinal electric field and a transverse electric field for parallel liquid crystal movement. Just to clarify, a VA panel usually has a high contrast ratio and narrow viewing angles. However, an IPS panel has low contrast and wide viewing angles. These are the main differences between each, and for the most part, the panel type doesn't affect other aspects of picture quality. If you want to learn more about this, check out our review by clicking the link over here. Or, you can read our Learn article about VA versus IPS panels in the description below. For HDR content, first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that the Input Signal Plus is enabled on the port you're playing the content from, unless the content you're watching is coming from the TV directly. Samsung TVs don't support Dolby Vision, so if you're watching Netflix, you'll get regular HDR10. They do support HDR10+, which is currently playable on specific 4K UHD Blu-rays and some Amazon Prime content. As for the recommended picture mode, the movie picture mode is once again our choice. In general, we recommend you leave the picture settings to their defaults in HDR. However, if you find the HDR image to be too dim, you can set the contrast enhancer to off, low, or high and you can increase the ST2084 slider until it matches the brightness you want. There's also LED clear motion that will enable BFI feature. I'll explain what this is in a moment. Most of these settings highly depend on personal preference and what type of content you're consuming, so play around with it until you find something you like, or just disable it completely. If you want to know more about motion interpolation, check out this video here. Quick note for you all, if you aren't already, and if you like our content, please subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell to be notified for our next videos. Now, if you're a sports fan, you'll be happy to know that you won't have to change much of the settings here. Keep the same picture mode we recommended for movies and TV shows. BFI, as I briefly mentioned before, may be an option for you while watching sports. What this does is lower the backlight flicker frequency to 60 Hz by adding black frames in between each frame. Do note that this does cause the screen to flicker, which can become distracting to some. Keep in mind, enabling BFI will lower the brightness of the backlight, which may make the screen too dark for you. Try it out for yourself and see if you like it. For TV shows, you want to follow the same recommendation for movies. I know I sound like a broken record, but again, feel free to play around depending on the content you're watching and see if you prefer a brighter image or some interpolation to smooth out some of the movement. It's all personal preference, and you might enjoy the classic soap opera look and feel to your content. Play around with these settings and make it your own. Now for our gamers out there, let's take a look at our recommended settings. First off, it's essential that you enable game mode from the general settings tab. This will enable the low latency mode in the TV so that you can enjoy your gaming experience with the least amount of latency. As long as you have HDMI CEC Plus enabled, whenever you start the game on your console, it will automatically switch into game mode using ALLM, so you don't have to worry about continuously switching it manually. If you want to get the most out of your gaming experience, you're going to want to take advantage of VRR, or variable refresh rate. What VRR does is this allows for a smoother and tear-free gaming experience. 
Basically, it adjusts the panel's refresh rate on the fly. You'll have to enable game mode and make sure your VRR of choice has been enabled and that's it. You'll find different VRR options within your gaming console's menu system. These TVs support all the most popular VRR. You'll be able to take full advantage of VRR if you've managed to get an RTX card or if you've got an Xbox Series X or a FreeSync GPU. Lucky you, by the way. We're still struggling to get our hands on more of these for our testing purposes. Both these TVs don't support G-Sync, but weirdly enough, our testers were able to get it to work sometimes. It was super inconsistent, but we didn't expect it to work as they don't officially support it according to Samsung. For HDR gaming, you'll want to make sure Input Signal Plus is enabled. This will allow the TV to open up the full bandwidth of the port. Normally, that's where I'd stop talking about it, but unfortunately, Samsung does a weird thing with that setting. Anytime you unplug something from one of the ports, it resets Input Signal Plus to off. That means if you've got a lot of devices and you unplug them often, you'll always have to check that setting. You'll also need to make sure that this setting is enabled in order to take full advantage of any 4K 120Hz content on a PS5, Xbox Series X, or a PC. One thing I want to mention here is that local dimming in game mode actually behaves the same on both QN85A and the QN90A, so expect similar performance with this feature activated. Another cool feature Samsung has implemented here is this game mode tray. Here you can see your VRR is active, you can see the frame rate, input lag settings, and more. We thought it was a pretty useful addition. If you wish to bring up this game bar, first you need to make sure you're in game mode on the TV. Next, you'll have to hold down the play pause button. There you go. Use PC mode in the input section for proper 444 chroma subsampling. The other modes are used simply for labels. If you want to use any of these TVs as a computer monitor, you'll be pleasantly surprised. When plugging in a PC, the TV automatically switches to PC mode and this allows for low input lag and proper 444 chroma subsampling. This means you'll get crisp and clear text for PC use. The only thing to keep in mind is that PC mode has its own picture modes. So if you want to use your calibrated movie picture settings, you'll have to change the input source type in the menu to something else. This will get rid of proper 444 and low input lag, so it's up to you based on whether you use a PC to watch your movies or if you just want to browse the internet or play games. As I mentioned earlier, you're able to see the refresh rate and resolution the TV is displaying at any time. It's very helpful when trying to make sure the TV is being sent the signal you want it to, whether it's in gaming or when watching some movies. All you need to do is hit the center button on the remote, and it will bring up a small window that will report the signal being shown. It's simple, but helpful. Alrighty then, so what do you think of these settings? Have you tried them? Let us know what settings work best for you in the comments below. Also, we're currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So if you want to help people find the best product for their needs, have a look at the careers page on our website. You can check out all the measurements and settings along with our full reviews on ratings.com. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. You can also become an insider on the website for early access to our latest results. So that's it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.